of Columbus. I think it's the, the hometownness because it really does. It is my hometown, but it has this hometown feel of you got to see it be a part of the growth of it. Um, you take pride in that, I think. It's the biggest small town you'll come to. Anywhere. Anywhere. You can go out of town and run into somebody from Columbus. I've been sitting in a bar in Cancun and look to my right and there's somebody from Columbus. Heck, you're three hours from the beach, you're three hours to the mountains, and you're an hour and a half to the Georgia National Fair. What else can you? <laughs> and you can throw a stone to the Alabama, so. All right, is everybody ready to go rafting? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're right here in downtown Columbus uh, on the Chattahoochee River. Uh, we're with Whitewater Express, and we do rafting in the middle of an old mill town. They, uh, they blew out the dams and had an amazing visionary project to recreate the entire downtown district. So we are the closest whitewater rafting to the entire state of Florida. So we get a lot of travelers come up from Florida, um, you know, only being about three, and, three hours and 30 minutes from Panama City and in the, in the Gulf Coast right there, you know, 90 minutes south of Atlanta. So there's, there's a lot of people that travel here and, and Columbus has really begun to blossom as a tourism town. True story, I mean, I'm a Columbus native. It used to be kind of just like a don't go in the water kind of mentality. And I think we've really changed that. Um, so the rapids actually increase the health of the river. Having the, the river flow naturally actually bring, has brought back, um, you know, fish to the river. And the aeration makes it a healthier river. Now this is when you get the scope of how big this river is. That is a 13 foot raft. <laughs> Here they disappear and they're gone. Achoom. They made it through. So we are right here on the Chattahoochee River. That's Columbus, Georgia right there in the background. We're looking right here at uh, the biggest rapid in the eastern United States. It's called Cutbait. Uh, and then behind it over on the other side of the river is Wave Shaper. So these are my, this is my favorite spot on the whole entire river. I love it. Uh, you get a bird's eye view of everything and you get Especially as the sun begins to set, you get the most epic view of just the downtown district. And so it is, this is my favorite spot. The kikers love this place. And so what's so cool is you got uh, a river that is not boring for experts and is great for beginners. You know, you have eddies that are huge and great so you can paddle around and learn the skill and the sport. But then also you have the ability to, to, to fire it up and get into the big stuff and, and really uh, get into some of those really cool rapids and whatnot and long surfs that are glassy that you can really do flips and tricks and all that kind of stuff. So it's fun, it's, it's aggressive, it's big, but uh, ultimately I think this is why people talk, still are talking about it and it's not just a rinky dink little shoot down the river, it's legit rapids that are really, really cool. You are in Columbus, Georgia, West Central Georgia, second largest city in Georgia. It's an old, old town. This was as far up the Chattahoochee as you could go before you got stuck. And it was built on spinning and cotton and brick and iron and peanuts. We are a general bookstore, a true general bookstore. Over the years, you gotta remember, when I was young, as all the old cats back when we had all the really, really good bookstores just about on every block, these are the cats that trained me. And then these cats just got old and I was no longer the youngster and I turned around and said, oh, well, I'm the old guy now. We have a couple of signed Mark Twains. We have a signed Joyce. We have a couple of inlaid signed Dickens. We actually have a 1932 LEC Alice's Adventures in Wonderland signed by Alice. So we have an Alice signed by Alice. 
You know, books are like foods, or a book is like a steak. Sometimes you're in the mood for a salad, so you don't want to really read that one. You know, you want to read this one. So it doesn't really, you don't know what kind of mood you're in until you're looking in and saying, well, this is what's going to work for me. I don't just read mysteries. I don't just read science fiction. I don't just read post-apocalyptic, dystopian, utopian. I did get into a post-apocalyptic, dystopian, utopian circus phase where everything that I was reading fell into one of those categories. That was weird. I'm fortunate. I don't have responsibilities outside of this. I don't have ex-wives. I don't have children in college. My house is paid for. I'm not a status warrior. I'm not out buying cars every day. Obviously, I'm not a fashion mogul. Um, so it takes somebody like me to be able to do it. Anybody else, there would not be enough money in it for them. It's a labor of love. I made good decisions when I was young, so I can do this, hopefully, until I retire. People are friendly. I like the people. I've always been Southern, despite my lack of accent. Um, just, and Columbus is one of those, you can do anything you want to do. You also just have to know a lot of people. That's it. If you come down here and visit and say, where's the hot spot? There really isn't a hot spot. It's like, go to a blue collar bar, sit in the middle, listen to conversation. Somebody's going to say something you agree with or disagree with. Make a comment, game on. Right now, I am loading up our mixer with the with the cheese before we put the the butter will go in next. I would say we we produce between um, around 800 units a day. We cook from eight in the morning to six at night. Then you got to clean it up. It gets pretty crazy. We cook about. Uh, four days a week and pack on the fifth day. It was my mom's recipe. Um, I had never even made a cheese straw until I was about 20. And I was looking for something to make for friends for Christmas, so I grabbed her recipe and just started making cheese straws. These are one pound block sticks of butter. We use all natural butter. And as you can see, I mean, it is, th there's nothing fancy here. We use Land O'Lakes butter. It's, it's all about a really good ingredient to get a good cheese straw. Now I'm cutting them into the bite size pieces that we put in the bags. We decided that that's just gonna be who we are. We're just gonna be southern straws and we make the bite size uh, wafer cheese straws and so that's who we are today. Machines have the capability to do that cutting, but because our cheese straws are thin, it just flips them every which way. So that didn't work for us. So it's like, all right, you gotta do this by hand. Today we're gonna do 60 batches. I would say it is probably, um, I'll cut, maybe 80 trays. Give you a little perspective. When Neil and I started, we probably would do 10 batches a day, three days a week. So you're looking at 30 batches. And, you know, we thought we were doing great. And then this last year has been phenomenal growth for us. Well, now we're at 60 a day. And it's not three days a week. It's five days a week, and then as we get closer to Christmas, it'll be seven days a week. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I don't think I was sitting in finance class thinking one day I'm going to be hand cutting cheese straws and hand, hand bagging cheese straws and um, shipping them out. I thought I was going to be sitting at a cubicle crunching numbers all day, but I think this is a little bit more fun than that. He was standing there passing the cheese straws on the silver tray with his fancy tuxedo. And I mean, the women, they would like bump into each other looking at this guy standing, this 20 something year old, which is unusual anyway. There are not a lot of, at the time, 24 year olds in the food section of the Atlanta Mart with a food product. That was unusual anyway. 
working with their mom. That was unusual too. The whole thing was pretty bizarre. We've, we've got a great following in Brooklyn, New York. We, um, we have folks there that love them. And yeah, people love to, uh, if they have relatives up north, yeah. they're like, let's give them a taste of the south. And so yes. what better than southern straws? And they, they send them some southern straws for Christmas. And, we um, love that. That's awesome. And then they, we, we end up getting orders online from uh, New York when they, after they do that because they get hooked on them. But it's been fun to, to work with her and to, to go um, to grow together because we're both trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, it's been fun. Well, what you're standing in is the number one uh, free museum is rated by USA Today and one of the top 12 military museums in the world. And this is the National Infantry Museum that honors soldiers past, present, future specifically uh, and specializing on infantry. Well, Fort Benning is probably or is the largest uh, training facility in the training and doctrine command. So on any given day, you will have 16 to 18,000 soldiers going through training at Fort Benning. The infantryman owns the last 100 yards of battle and has owned it since our inception in 1775. So the infantry is actually older than our nation, uh, but the nine-man squad and the infantryman at the tip of the spear has not changed throughout history and has not changed in the last 243 years that we've been an army. So. It takes somebody, if, if a nation is truly committed to its goals, to place its sons and daughters in the dirt to hold a piece of ground. And you can't do that with a plane, you can't do it with a ship. You have to do it with a soldier. I'm a third generation infantryman, so when you look at it, we're tied to Columbus and Columbus is tied to us. Uh, over the last 100 years, Columbus has not only provided that support, but also its sons and daughters who have served and who, those who haven't served, who has supported. Uh, having been a brigade commander here at Fort Benning with the 3rd Brigade, 3rd Infantry, it was the support of this community that was essential while we were deployed for over a year to Iraq. Uh, Columbus is a jewel for the state of Georgia. Uh, as its second largest city, people don't really realize that. The fact that we have won uh, the Springer Opera House, which is one of the, you know, is the, the oldest opera house in the state. We have a phenomenal college in Columbus State University with a great sports programs. And I think the other part is, is that Columbus is a great city to, to live and work and have fun in. And I think because it has that still that small town flavor, when you walk down Broad Street, uh, you get a sense of what that is all about. So there's all kinds of things that happen at the end of 185 that people just have to get off the highway a little bit and come to experience. Uh, my sister and I uh, came down here for a visit and uh, she's a nutritionist and we've talked for years about wanting to open a juice bar. Uh, we were living in Atlanta at the time, actually, and we came down here for a visit and noticed there's not really any healthy food options. Uh, and we kind of saw an opportunity and we worked with um, Jason, the owner of the bike shop, uh, to open up this little uh, juice bar inside of his bike shop. Uh, we've, we've built a lot of momentum in the last year or so. We've been open for three years total. Um, there, it took a little while for people to catch on because there's not really anything like, uh, like what we're doing in Columbus. Um, so now people are starting to kind of see, you know, hey, there are some, you can actually have healthy food that tastes good at the same time. Um, so probably our healthiest things are the, uh, the cold pressed juices that we make. Uh, we do them in large batches. Uh, it's 100% fruits and vegetables. There's no preservatives, artificial sweeteners, anything like that. Um, and there go, there's about three pounds of produce that goes into each 16 ounce bottle that we sell. And it's a lot of bang for your buck as far as nutrition goes. Down here, uh, especially on Broadway, right here where we're located, uh, there seems to be almost every night uh, someone playing live music, you know, outside, and it's it's a really great atmosphere. There's a lot of wonderful people here. I I 
felt at home is immediately when I came down, and uh, and I don't regret it even for a second. It's it's wonderful people. There's a lot more to do than people think down here, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of outdoor activities and a lot of fun to be had. I, I bike to work every day. In Atlanta, my commute was an hour and a half uh, one way to get to my job, and now it's a two-minute bike ride. It's it's an entirely different lifestyle. We are at 805 Fifth Avenue in Columbus, Georgia. We are at the home of Gertrude Ma Rainey, mother of the blues. You know, sometimes the, the people who started, they pay the price. And then they path the way, they paved the way for others. So I look at Ma Rainey as paving the way for Billie Holiday, Bessie Smith. I look at her for paving the ways for people like the Supremes and uh, Aretha Franklin. The house was like a an explosion had occurred and we virtually had to put the house back together like a jigsaw puzzle. She had built it during her productive years when Paramount Records and then she retired here during when she was really making money. Because uh, this was a, a magnificent two-story house back then. Well, this is one of our very proud pieces we have, a famous, this is the Rabbit Foot Minstrel Show that a lot of, as you can see, the world's most famous colored traveling shows, they were primarily with African Americans. Uh, they would have dancers, known as shape dancers, they would have musicians, but it also, this genre of performing and platform gave them the platform to do, to apply their trade, to be known, because if, if this minstrel show had not come into town, we wouldn't have had Pa Rainey and Ma Rainey, the Assassinators of the Blues. So you can look at it at, at both ways. It was a part of the country. Uh, and segregation, Jim, it wasn't a good time of the country, but it did also give them the platform for their music. Uh, it's written and all over, she was bisexual. Um, she was not ashamed of it. Uh, Prove It By Me Blues is one of her songs that she, one of the lyrics go, I went out with my friends last night. It must have been women because I don't like men. So that was one of her lyrics. I think she was before her time. Um, and her, you know, she was known to drink, carry a gun. Um, very risque. But these are some of the actual records that people found on different sites or people's grandparents or great-grandparents had them and we were able to buy them. If you would mail order through Paramount Records, they cost from 10 cent to 35 cent. So a lot of her songs weren't, weren't uh, produced to later in her life. She wrote the songs, but they weren't produced because she didn't have a contract to 1923. Um, these are the performers, people who, music legends who performed with Ma Rainey. We have uh, Georgia Tom, he's from Georgia, it's Thomas A. Dorsey. He was her piano player. This is one that's pretty famous, Louis Armstrong, Satchmo Arm, Fletcher Henderson is pretty famous, um, infamous Bessie Smith. She was very elaborate in her costume and her dress, her silver, her gold eagle pieces around her neck, her wigs, her costume, and her band members were in tuxedos. And uh, she always had a saying she wanted to be surrounded by handsome men. And they were pretty handsome. I don't want it to ever be where in her hometown, where she was born, where she came back to die, that people don't know who the mother of the blues. I don't want the children in the school, the children, the students at Columbus State or tourists, but basically, I don't want anyone in Columbus not to know who Ma Rainey was.
So welcome to our kitchen. Uh, today we're going to do a fried green tomato. Uh, what's unique about this fried green tomato is it has cornflakes as a crust. Yeah, that's right, cornflakes. Just a standard breading procedure. Uh, we slice the green tomatoes uh, from a local Pope Farms, and from there we flour with a little seasoning to it, egg wash, and then into a mixture of breadcrumbs, the white variety of breadcrumbs, and cornflakes. Uh, these will even hold within the freezer until needed in case you wanted to bread several at a time from your garden. Our greens that I'm tossing have a little bit of the dressing and a little bit of finishing salt, a little kosher salt there. And we're gonna do a little stack of the tomatoes with the greens. And here we have our epic fried green tomato salad. Pickled okra, pickled onions, buttermilk dressings two ways, crispy angel hair. So we want folks to leave Epic Restaurant saying, what a wonderful experience. Not, that was a good dinner, a great drink. We want the whole package to take care of that. The menu itself is eclectic. So we could have items on there based on the season. It could be from kangaroo, sea scallops, soft shell crabs, just based on the season availability. You know, somebody celebrating a 50th anniversary, you know, they're not gonna have another one, chances are. I haven't met anybody who's had two 50th wedding anniversaries. So if you, we've decided to make this decision to be here at Epic Restaurant and, and we had that responsibility to provide you a wonderful experience. We have, we have folks dine. You know, we have guests come to us from all places. Folks drive from Florida, have dinner, turn around and drive back. Tennessee, you know, North Georgia, all different places around the state. We're only as good as the last meal we cook. So here we have a vanilla based sauce, chambord, yeah, we got that. Yeah. And then, this what we do is we could turn this into ice cream in no time. Well, it's 320 degrees below zero, um, so you don't want to don't want to put your tongue on this for sure. And basically, we're freezing it. So when you have alcohol, normally you'd have to put it in a blender to freeze it. Uh, because the alcohol won't freeze at a traditional freezer temp that we have at our homes or in our restaurants. So here, at 320 degrees below zero, we can freeze that alcohol, uh, just like you see here. So this could be used as a, you know, an end to an experience or even a, uh, a middle experience to your dining pleasure. This is a little micro mint on there. Did a pear, uh, pear, uh, Saint Pear, Saint Germain, a pear liqueur. The Chambord was going to give you that, that, that raspberry note. And then basically as the ice cream melts, you incorporate um, the two liqueurs with it to have you know, a wonderful palate, excitement, pleasure. Give me some other verbs, but you know, that's where we're at. Enjoy. Oh my goodness, it's used for everything from children's dance recitals to um, performances by individual students at CSU. Um, the Columbus Symphony Orchestra obviously has its season here, the Columbus Ballet. Um, and then it is it, it can be rented for corporate events. My company for a number of years held its annual meetings on the stage of the Bill Hurd Theater here at River Center. So it is used um, a, a lot in a variety of different ways. But we also have something that is far more um, what I think of as grassroots, a grassroots response to the arts downtown and those are the different statues and art installations that you see all along each block downtown. That's not the River Center doing that, we're supportive of that effort, but I think it's an offshoot of how the community has embraced this. So. I think Columbus is um, not unlike many other um, smaller southern communities in that it's friendly and it's welcoming. 
But I think we have something else that's an advantage for us, and that is that we embrace those that come from the outside. We welcome them. We want them to become a part of the community. When I grew up here, you could go to any restaurant or to, frankly, any event, and you would know 60 to 80 percent of the people that were there. And now I take it as a sign of health and growth and development for this community that we go into a major restaurant, we can come here to the River Center and 85% of the people are not known to my family. And that tells me that we are growing and that people like what they experience here and they're, they're making a life here. And um, so I think we are a little unique in that respect. Thank you.